G'day everybody and welcome back to my Aussie garden and kitchen. My name's Darren, but you can call me Daz if this is your first time here. I pretty much do gardening and cooking. And in today's episode, I'm gonna be cooking with Chinese wine. I'm doing a Chinese beef and I'm using Chinese cooking wine. I really love this stuff. It's called Xiao Jing. Apologies if I've got that wrong. Xiao Jing is a rice wine. And from what I understand in the region in China where it comes from, they actually have a drinking version of it and that's really good to drink. But this is a cooking version and you definitely don't drink this by itself. It's not good. So you use it in cooking and believe me, in Chinese cooking, uh, it is awesome. So Zhao Jing is the rice wine I'm gonna be using in today's recipe. Do check it out, it's great in Asian foods. And I think I've talked long enough, so how about we just get into it, hey? Okay, so first of all, we're going to put a damp cloth down onto the bench. The damp cloth will help the chopping board from sliding around and it just makes things a little bit safer for you. And then I've got a packet of blade beef steaks here. This is just a packet that my wife bought home from the supermarket. And we're just gonna cut, the, cut them into shape first. And then when you go to cut the pieces into slices, you want to cut across the grain just to help with it being a little bit tender because I'm not actually gonna marinate this for very long. It's pretty much just going to sit in the fridge while I'm doing the other preparations. So as you can see, I'm just slicing them into nice little rectangles. And if you get a little piece at the end, you can cut it almost all the way through and flatten it out and butterfly it and it just makes an extra piece that looks similar to the others. All right, so we'll just speed along and chop, 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 fill up the bowl and we've pretty much got all our pieces ready to go in the bowl. Now comes the rice wine and we're just gonna pour that in. And as I said earlier, this rice wine is fantastic, really good for cooking. This is a light soy sauce so we're just popping in the light soy sauce and actually you will notice that i don't use salt in the recipe because there's plenty of salt in a lot of the ingredients this is a plum sauce just a commercial plum sauce that you can buy off the shelf in supermarkets corn flour or cornstarch as people say in other countries and a teaspoon of baking powder here this will all mix in well and it does quite well once it's mixed together. So we'll just give it a good mix with the spoon here. And you can see as I've gone along, it's all mixed together and it'll go in the fridge. This is my own recipe. It's one that I've played with over a few years and I've tweaked it here and there and I've added things and removed things and I've pretty much got it down to where I'm really happy with it. So this is my final recipe. Now at this stage, I would realized that I forgot to put in the cracked black pepper. So what you would do is when you're adding the other ingredients such as the rice wine and the soy sauce and the cornstarch, just add your cracked black pepper. You can see there that I'm putting it in and I guess a teaspoon is recommended. I sort of do it to eye. Now I'm changing boards, I use different coloured boards for meats and vegetables and I've got three carrots here but please ignore two of them as I'm only going to use one in this recipe but you can by all means add an extra carrot if you'd like to. So I'm just using my favourite mandolin here. I really like this machine because it gives everything a perfect cut every time and for Chinese cooking especially if you look at this, everything's even, it's thin to the size, uh, to the thickness that I want it, and it just helps with everything cooking evenly when it's all being tossed around in, into the wok. Now I'm going to just cut my red onions into quarters, wedges. It doesn't have to be a red onion, it can be a brown onion, but I like the sweetness of the red onion and I'm just separating them so when I do throw them into the wok they're going to stir around and mix and cook evenly like the carrots. I've got spring onions here which I believe people overseas call scallions and I think possibly they're also called 
green onions and I've cut them on an angle so they just have that sort of pointed look on the ends and that goes well with Asian cooking and they're a nice aromatic too they'll actually add a bit of aroma and flavor to this recipe keep the onions separate guys because they're going to be added by themselves at a later point okay now we've got a wok that's been preheating on a high flame and the flame is going to stay high for the entire time we've added the oil and I'm just going to swish it around in the wok just to seal it my wok has actually been seasoned which means it's been put on a high heat and is pretty much made non-stick so I've just got that oil swished around like that now I'm adding the beef and I'm rather than putting a great big ball of it out of the bowl I'm just putting them in separately and moving them around I just want to get a nice little coating and have that oil seal the surface so you can see there I'm just moving it around the hot oil we don't want to put too much in as well because it will reduce the heat in the pan and we don't want the wok to cool down that much so as you can see here I'm just going to start stirring it around and then over time the heat is coming back up unfortunately I don't have an intense wok burner but I can just get by with the large jet on my stove and I'm just pushing it down here just to even it out because there's little bits that may have folded over on the edge or whatever and I'm just turning them here with the tongs just to make sure all the sides get a color and you can see now that the heat has really started to pick up in the wok mixing it around making sure I coat all the surface and I'm not actually trying to cook the beef completely so this beef here would be about medium and we're going to put that onto a plate to the side because that's going to be added later when we have a sauce with the vegetables and we go again for the whole process of adding the meat you can see here I'm adding just a little bit of oil just to help it crispen up a little bit it was starting to catch in the bottom there so I'm mixing and you might catch me actually scraping the bottom of the pan with the meat so this is obviously the second lot that I'm taking out again medium rare and putting it onto the plate very important to have the high heat and little amounts of food cooking in this pan because we want to keep the heat going as much as we can we don't want it cooling down by doing large batches so again just a little bit of oil swish it around to get it warm and this is the last of the meat so we're just popping that in giving it a stir giving it a good color and again medium rare and onto the plate and you can see the coloring and the gloss on the meat it's looking pretty good there now we're just adding a little bit of oil again because we want to put in the onion and carrots now so I'll just put in the onion here to show you what it looks like separated and then throw the carrots on top and we're stirring that for a couple of minutes making sure all the surfaces make contact with the hot wok then goes in the green onions and we'll give them a nice little stir and get them in there as well and at this point it smells really good we're adding garlic and ginger do not burn the garlic because garlic will give a bitter taste if it's burnt and we'll just stir that in very nice you can see the heat in the pan there and I'm actually just having a smell here just having a bit of a sniff of the beautiful oh, it, was, it was great anyway we're adding the stock now so we're getting that in there and swishing that in the pan around again one thing is it's lifting the flavor off the bottom of the pan and the other thing was to just warm it up a bit around the sides you can see the different sauces going in now and the recipe will be listed at the end of the video so all the measurements are in there for you guys so look out for that now with the honey I just like to put the spoon into the liquid and stir it around just so it melts off the spoon that is the brown sugar we're just going to get that in there and stir that in and this is only going to cook for maybe a minute maximum just making sure we get all those flavors blended together the vegetables par cooked already and they're now blanching in the liquid this is the corn flour or cornstarch now you can add add this to your liking but 
I've got my measurement at the end of the recipe and I think it was a heaped tablespoon in half a cup of water and that's pretty much the sauce done it's that easy just cooking that a little bit longer to cook out the corn flour or the cornstarch and I'm just adding the beef now and when I start mixing it you will see how glossy everything becomes with that sauce combined with everything absolutely love this recipe now for us we've gone a little heavy on the beef because that's the way the family prefers it but you can add another carrot or two if you like and you could add more onions if you like or you could even add say snow peas and you'd add snow peas at the stage where you put the green onions but I'm pretty happy with this and it smells fantastic the family are all waiting behind me and that's why I dub over these because the family are all talking in the background and we have a rainbow lorikeet that likes to talk as well now look at that just look at the shine that is fantastic I'm really happy with this I'm dying to dig into it so we've got nice glossy food there the beef will be tender I can guarantee it it's going to be quite hot but I can't wait here we go And there's a piece of the onion to see the onion's still firm and has a bit of, it does have a bit of crunch to it, a bit of bite. And there's the thumbs up. Very good. So here's the recipe. These are the ingredients that I've used and the measurements that I've used in this particular recipe. So thanks very much for watching this video. I do appreciate it. I will have other cooking recipes coming in future. Plus I've already got some on my page. So thanks again, guys, and I will see you next time. Bye for now.